this video, I'm going to discuss Chapter 1 Derivation Strategy, and I'm also going to do some, and using a bunch of problems uh, as examples. So the first strategy we're already familiar with, which is show consequence. So the strategies that I'm going to discuss mostly revolve around what subderivations to do when. So the first sort of subderivation we know is, well, so the first, and in particular, not just what subderivation to do, but there are a bunch of subderivation commands and when to use them. So we've already seen show consequent, but just to remind you, suppose that we're trying to show a conditional. Well, the first thing we'll do, of course, is assume CD. We'll, assume, we'll make it, always make an assumption, and if it's a conditional, we'll make a conditional assumption, so assume CD. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, do, we want to show the consequent. And in, in the mixed derivation example I did in the previous video, I didn't do that because in that case, I knew it was unnecessary. So you don't actually always have to do show consequent. You did the initial derivations you did for homework didn't involve doing show consequent. But that said, if you're trying to show a conditional, you basically always want to do show consequent. You always want to do assume CD and then immediately show consequent. And then you'll make an assumption that's appropriate to circle, whatever circle may be. If it's another conditional, you'd say assume CD and then you'd immediately do another show consequent. But it might not be a circle, might not itself be a conditional, it might be a sentence letter or it might be a negation, in which case you'd make an indirect assumption. But in any case, at some point, you will complete this subderivation and then you know, okay, good. I just showed the consequent of line one, and so therefore I can box and cancel line one, and then I'm done. And that's why we do show consequent. We do show consequent because we know that once we're done with it, then we can complete the whole derivation. So there are always there are one of two reasons why we do a show commit. When we're stuck, then we choose to do a subderivation, and th there are two ways in which a subderivation might help us. It might let us cancel the entire deriv the larger derivation we're in. That's the best thing. Second best, it might let us make an inference rule application that hopefully will move us closer to our ultimate goal of canceling the subderiva the derivation we're inside of. So either you do it because one, it's going to help you cancel the derivation that you're inside of, or two, it's going to help you apply an inference rule, which will help helpfully then subsequently help you complete the derivation you're inside of. The second strategy is show on negation, and we've already seen this in action, but we're going to do a So we've seen, we've already seen show on negation in action, but we're going to do a couple of uh, sample derivations that involve it. So here's our first one. Okay, so here we go. We have, our conclusion is, if not R, then Q. Our premise is, if P only if not R, then Q. So we want to show the conclusion. We're going to make an assumption. Always assume CD because it's conditional. And now we're going to employ that first uh, strategy we talked about, we're going to show the consequent of the conditional. So there we go. And again, we want to make an assumption. The only assumption we can make is an indirect one. And now, since we, we're, we're done with setting up our derivation, we'll bring in our premise. So we have the one conditional on line 5, and so we want to look for inference rule, inference rule applications with that conditional. We don't have the antecedent but we do have the negation of the consequent, and that means we can do modus tollens. And so we get the negation of the antecedent. Now we want to look for more inference rule applications, in particular more modus ponens and modus tollens applications. So there are only going to be more modus tollens or modus, modus ponens applications if there are more conditionals. But there are no more conditionals. Line 2 is not a conditional. Line 1 is a show line. We can't use it. Line It's an uncancelled show line. Line 2 is not R, it's not a conditional. Line 3 is an uncancelled show line. Line 4 is not a conditional. Line 5 is a conditional that we've already used. And line 6, while it contains a conditional, is not a conditional because it's a negation. So there's no more modus ponens or modus tollens. And that means we're stuck. We Stuck being the official term for can't do any more inference rule applications. And when you're stuck, then you want to do a subderivation. Okay, so now we're going to need to do another subderivation. And we want to do a subderivation that's going to help us somehow move forward in completing the derivation. And the best way to move forward in completing the derivation would be to let us box and cancel line 3. If we box and cancel line 3, then we have Q. And Q, as line as this tells us, is the consequent of the line that we're 
that we were trying to show when we did this subderivation. And since we have the consequent of the line we were trying to show, we can say CD. So ideally, what we want, so if we can box and cancel line 3, then we can box and cancel line 1, and we're done. So what we would like, if we can get it, is a subderivation that's going to allow us to box and cancel line 3. And also, we want a subderivation that's going to take advantage of lines we haven't used yet. Well, we have, on the one hand, we haven't used line 6, and we would like to get a uh, um, something that would let us box and cancel. Well, line 6 is a negation, and it's a negation of this, right? Line 6 is not if p then r, and line 7 is if p then r, which has no justification. But if we got line 7, then we could, then we could indeed box and cancel indirectly because we would have a contradiction, and that would be nice. So what we want to do is show if p then not r, because on the one hand it will let us complete the sub complete the subderivation we're inside of, and that will let us complete the main derivation. And on the other hand, it will take advantage of line 6, and we have to take advantage of line 6 one way or another. So what we want is to show the unnegation, the unnegated form of, of line 6. So we say show unnegation, and of which line? Of line 6. Boom. There we go. So now we're showing the unnegation of line 6. Well, we're trying to show a conditional now, so we make an assumption, p, and then we want to get not r. We could say show not r, but look, we already have not r. So let's bring it down. In fact, we don't even need line 8. We could have left it, but we don't need it. And we can say line 8 cd, because not r is the consequent of line 7, and that's what we need to do, cd. In our system, if uh, the consequent of a conditional is true, then the conditional is true. I mentioned earlier that in our system, if the antecedent of a conditional is true, then the conditional is true. And also now we see that if the consequent of a conditional is true, then the conditional is true. And that is slightly odd, as we'll see. It's maybe a little bit unnatural, but that's how our conditional works. So this is a valid form of reasoning given what our arrow means. So we've completed this subderivation, so let's, box, let's hide it. Now, why did we do this subderivation? Well, if we forgot, we can look over here and says, okay, we did a show, okay, it's show, and it was an unnegation. Oh, well, that means whatever we showed is the unnegation of some, of some line, and that means we have that line and this contradict it, and it's the unnegation on line 6. So if we cite line 7, the line we just showed, and 6, the unnegation of line 7, we have what we need for, we should have what we need for ID, and indeed we do. We have if P then not R, and then we have not if p then not r. So that's a contradiction. So that lets us box and cancel line 3. We can close that as well because we're not going to use it anymore. If we forgot why we did line 3, we can look over here. It says show consequent. Oh, that means we showed the, that, that q is the consequent of the main of the thing that we were trying to show when we started line the subderivation of 3. And now that we're done with that subderivation, we can say 3 c d. And we are done. So there we go. What we illustrated, most importantly, we saw show conclusion, assume CD, we're familiar with that. We saw, okay, we should do show consequent always unless we know we don't need to. And then here we say, okay, here's our new strategy, show unnegation. And what do we do? When we have something that's negated, we show the unnegation of it. And we do that so that we can do ID. So let's hop back over to our, um, yeah, to this and resume the slideshow. So what does show unnegation look like in general? Well, so you're trying to show something. So you make some sort of assumption. Who knows what you're trying to show? Maybe it's a conditional, maybe it's not. In any case, at some point you get to a negated conditional. And maybe you proceed, maybe there's more stuff you can do. But at some point, after having gotten the negated conditional, you get stuck. No more inference rule applications. So what do you do? You show the unnegation of the negated conditional. You show unneg. And you go ahead and, you know, you, however you do that, you do that subderivation and you complete it. And then you can say, aha, now ID, I can box and cancel the main derivation because on line 5 and line 3 I have a contradiction. And that's why we do show unnegation. So I think I said I would do a couple of unnegations, but actually I'm not going to do those right now. I'm going to do those in a separate video as an example, just some more problems. And right now what I'm going to do is show you the other main show strategy, which is show ant. 
So what's show ant all about? Well, let's go and find out in the program. So we're going to do problem 30. Oh boy, that's way out there. But we can do it. We can. So we'll show the conclusion. We'll make an assumption for conditional derivation. We'll show the consequent. And make, we'll make an assumption. In this case, it will be an indirect assumption. And now we're going to bring in our premise. OK, so as usual, we want to look for inference rule applications. Good. OK. So here's our conditional. It's the only conditional we have. And so we want to do modus ponens or modus tollens with it. But what would, what would we need? Well, we would need this, or we would need not that. Do we have that's this is the antecedent. Do we have the antecedent? No. This is the consequent. Do we have the negation of the consequent? No. So no modus ponens or modus tollens. No show on negation. So we need to do, we're stuck. We need to do a subderivation. Can we do show on negation? No, we can't because there's nothing negated. To, well, we could do a, I suppose we could do show on neg of four, but this gets us nowhere right we just get the same assumption over again and so this trying to do this subderivation is not going to help us in general you want to do show on negation only of complex negations so only of uh, like a double negation or more importantly of a negated conditional it's really of a negated conditional when you want to do show on neg okay so here we have line five we can't use it well, what do we need so what we want what we want is q then not s or not not r then not s. If we had either of those, then we could do modus ponens with five. So that tells us what we want to do. We want to do a subderivation of one of these two. So we're going to do a subderivation of the antecedent of line five. So we're going to say show and then ant for antecedent and then uh, antecedent of which formula or sentence the sentence on line five. So show if q then not s. And we can assume cd. Now what's the consequent of line 6? Not not s. So that's what we want to box and cancel. Can we get not not s? Yes we can. If we look back up we see oh on line 2 we have s. How do we get from s to not not s? We do double negation. So there's the consequent of line 6 and so we can say cd. Good. We can close that up. Now, let's think about, we did this, we did a subderivation because we were stuck. Now we've completed the subderivation, so we want to use this thing we just got. How are we going to use it? Well, in case we forgot, we can look over here. It says we were trying to show the antecedent of something. We were trying, and well, we know, okay, if we were trying to show the antecedent of something, then there's another thing that's conditional, and this is the, this line is the antecedent of that, so we can do modus ponens with whatever it is the conditional whose antecedent we've just shown, and the conditional whose antecedent we've just shown is on line 5. So we know we can do line 6, the line we just showed, and then 5 modus ponens, and we get not r, then not s. Can we do modus ponens and modus tollens with this? Indeed we can. We could do 4, 10 modus ponens, and we'd have not s. Can we use not s? We can. We can use it to uh, contradict line 2. So we'll copy that down for indirect derivation. Hooray. So we've shown line 3 now. Why did we show line 3? Because it's a consequent. Okay, good. So when we know that when we are done with this derivation, this subderivation, we've shown the consequent of the conditional that we were working on when we started the subderivation. So we can say 3CD and we are done. So what we saw here new is show antecedent. So what do we know about show antecedent? So if you have a conditional that you haven't used, you haven't used modus ponens or modus tollens with, you want to do modus ponens or modus tollens with it. So what you want to say is, I'm going to show whatever I would need to do modus ponens or modus tollens. And in particular, I'm going to show whatever I would need to do modus ponens with it, and that's the antecedent. So that's what I'm going to show. I'm going to show the antecedent. And once I have done that, once I've shown the antecedent, I can do modus ponens and get the consequent. So if we look at it schematically, this is what it looks like schematically. So let's spell that out. 
So we're trying to show something, and we chug along, and we get a conditional, and we keep going. And at some point, we get stuck, and we haven't used the conditional yet. So we say, OK, well, it would be good to do modus ponens with that conditional. Let's show the antecedent of the conditional. So we start our subderivation, and at some point, we complete the subderivation. Who knows how? It depends upon what circle is and what's going on in the rest of the derivation. But now that we've shown the antecedent of line 3, we can do modus ponens, and we get triangle. Where we have circle, and we have a circle and triangle, so we can do modus ponens. And that's why we do show ant. We do show ant that, so that when we're done with it, we can do modus ponens. Now, does triangle let us finish the derivation? Who knows? In our case, we weren't immediately done with the derivation. We had to do some more inference rule applications. And maybe we'll have to do, in bigger derivations, you'll have to do more subderivations, even after you complete this, the subderivation, uh, the show ant subderivation. So the derivation will continue, but at some point it will finish, and you can box and cancel. So we can summarize all of these conditions for subderivations as follows. You want to do show cons if you have if you're trying to show a conditional and why do you do that so you can box and cancel with CD. You can do show and negation if you have the negation if you have the negation of a conditional and why do you do that so then you can do indirect derivation with what you've shown and the negated conditional you already had. If you have an unused conditional you can show antecedent to get the antecedent, so you can do modus ponens. And there's also one more, which I'll just mention. If you have an unused conditional, you can try to show the negation of the consequent, because that will let you do modus tollens. So these are the four main subderivations you want to do, and this is in the order of preference that you, in general, want to do them, if you are going to have a general rule. Sometimes it won't always be necessary to do them in this order, but this is the general order of preference. So always, if you can, uh, show the consequent if you're trying. So note that line one says if you are trying to show a conditional, then show the consequent. Whereas line three says if you have a conditional, then uh, show the antecedent for modus ponens. So you want to keep track of that difference. Is it that I'm trying? If I'm trying to show a conditional, then one thing is appropriate, show consequent. If I have a conditional that I haven't used yet, then something else is appropriate, show antecedent. So you need to keep track of that difference. Otherwise, you're going to um, try to do the wrong, uh, uh, the wrong show command, and, and you'll go off in the wrong direction, and you'll go down a blind, uh, a blind, a blind goose chase, a rabbit hole, whatever. It won't work. It won't work because you'll be going in the wrong direction. So don't do that. So pay attention to these different conditions, and in particular, the difference between 1 and 3, between do I have a conditional or am I trying to show a conditional? So let's see now. One thing I want to show you is here we have a document. This is the uh, basic derivation strategy document. It's set up as a PDF on the set on the website. So what it tells us is the first thing we want to do is set up a derivation. And how do we do that? Well, the first thing we do is we show the conclusion. The second thing we do is we make an assumption. And we, if it's a conditional, we uh, make a conditional assumption. Otherwise, we make an indirect assumption. If you're trying to show a conditional, then you want to show its consequent. So you do another subderivation. And then you go back and you are going to 1, 2, and you're going to make an assumption because you just got a new show line. And you'll cycle through 1, 2, and 1, 3 until you're no longer trying to show a conditional, and therefore you're not doing show consequent anymore. At that point, you'll bring in the premises. Um, then you want to look for inference rule applications. And in particular, we're talking about looking for applications of modus ponens and modus tollens with a conditional. And once you've used a conditional once for modus ponens or modus tollens, you probably won't use it again. There are some special cases where you kind of might, I'm not going to try to describe them right now. For right now, once you've used a conditional with modus ponens or modus tollens, you're almost certainly done with it. At that point, either you're done or you're, and you'll have boxed and canceled the derivation, or you're stuck. And if you're stuck, you do a subderivation. One way to do a subderivation, you have to decide what subderivation to do. And I'm going to describe how to think about what subderivation to do in a slightly different way. Now, one way is you might think backward, meaning that you think, what subderivation, if I did it, would let me complete the, uh, the whole derivation or the larger derivation I'm inside of? And the answer is usually um, going to be show a neg in this case. In particular, if you have a negate conditional, then you show the conditional for indirect derivation. 
You might think forward, meaning that what resources do I have currently? How can I use them? And so in particular, if there's a line you haven't used in an inference, do a subderivation so that you can use the line. And this is show ant, right? If you have an unused conditional, show the antecedent of the conditional for modus ponens, or show the negation of the consequent for modus tollens. Okay, so this document, this document here is online uh, in unit three, and the previous document at the end of the keynote, so these slides are online, and this last slide in particular, I think you'll find quite useful. It's down at the bottom of this video, and I'll link the derivation, that basic derivation strategy document I was just looking at as well, at the bottom of this, uh, beneath this video. So good luck with the strategies. If you're having trouble, uh, let me know, and um, happy 